Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting a short training course on unsteady heat conduction equation. We have already talked about the physical significance of this unsteady heat conduction equation. We have explored in detail the concept of paradox of instantaneous heat propagation. And in today's video, we are going to talk about a brief background of Joseph Fourier. We all know that Joseph Fourier was the French mathematician who actually worked on this unsteady heat propagation and gave the theory. And we will take a few notes from the analytical theory of heat. This is the work which is published by Joseph Fourier on this groundbreaking work. And we will take a few notes from the very publication. Actually, this is the translated version of the publication. The actual publication was in French. So we will be taking the translated version, the official translated version. And then we'll talk about Fourier series orthogonality and a few demonstration of Fourier series. So those things are very important in relation to the topic we are studying. And hence, this can be said as a prerequisite to understand the heat conduction equation or the solution of the heat conduction equation. And hence, we'll be talking about all those things in detail. And in future video, we'll be talking about how to solve this particular equation analytically and what are the usage of this Fourier series, what we are going to learn today. So all those things will be covered in the upcoming video. So this series will be helpful and I hope you will be watching all the videos in this particular series. So now let us talk a little bit about Joseph Fourier because he was the person who invented the entire thing and it has actually revolutionized the signal processing and the heat transfer engineering. And that is why we should, it is, it is very important, even if it is not important, it is worth knowing something about Joseph Fourier. So Joseph Fourier was born in a French family in the year 1768. At an early age, he took part in French revolution and was also imprisoned for the same. So he was not only a scientist, he worked in French revolution. He was a kind of social scientist as well. He accompanied Napoleon Bonaparte during the Egyptian expedition. So he was also assisting Napoleon. So he was a close contact of Napoleon. And this is something which we do not know because we as a scientist, we know Joseph Fourier only for his contribution in theory of heat. But the thing is he has contributed in several fields and that's why I thought of learning something about him. So in 1801, Napoleon appointed him prefect, that is the governor. So he was served, he was also served as a governor of Napoleon. Then he also served as a professor. Actually, he was a professor initially and then he left the job and joined Napoleon as a prefect. So he served this academic professor at Ecole Polytechnic. So they are in Fran Fran France. And then uh, he, this is the revolutionary work which he published. This is on the heat transfer theory that is analytical theory of heat. This is the name in French. So you can just try to read it theory analytic de la chaleur or whatever. So we are not good at French. So, but the, the English version is analytical theory of heat, which he published in the year 1822. So everything was done in the year 1822 and still now we are using this Fourier series in every aspect of signal processing and heat transfer. His great work as I have mentioned has revolutionized the heat transfer engineering and signal processing. His name is one of the 72 names inscribed in I on Eiffel Tower. So this is one of the fact which you do not know if you have a chance to visit Eiffel Tower we should look for his name there. Okay. So now let us go to the uh, scientific part, mathematical part of the story. So this is something which I have taken from the uh, very book of Fourier, which he published and later on it was translated in English. So this is a translated version because he published in French. So we have, I have not taken that one because I don't understand French. 
so here it is uh, the very important statement of Fourier which he has told that he was the person for the first time who told that any analytical function that can be expressed as a combination or as a summation as a series of sine and cosine functions so here you can say this is a sine series so where a1 sin x plus a2 sin 2x plus a3 sin 3x and this can go up to a very uncountable numbers so this could be even an infinite series so any n i mean no, it is not only continuous function but also a discontinuous function can also be expressed as a summation of these things and that is why this particular concept has revolutionized the mathematical background because before that we didn't have idea of how to express a particular real life function in terms of mathematics suppose uh, if you just visualize if you have a function like this so this is a kind of ramp function if you have a function like that is periodically going up and down this is a simple sinusoidal function but in real life a function could be like this like any arbitrary line so how to express that arbitrary line in terms of mathematics that was given by Fourier and that can be done by simple summation of sine and cosine series so this only sine series is called half range Fourier sine series only cosine series is called half range Fourier cosine series and entirely this is called total Fourier series so we'll come to that so this is something which is written in the analytical theory of it his own book so here you can see he has mentioned like any function whatever phi x may be developed under the form so this you can express by this form now this a1 a2 a3 those are unknown and he also mentioned about how to calculate those unknowns or the arbitrary constant so that is given by say for a generic one a i sin i x so a i will be given by 2 by pi integral of 0 to pi dx phi x sin i x so now we we, we read about this particular thing, thing in every mathematical book but that has come from this very publication so this is the expanded form where phi x and they have actually given all the coefficients so from this formula for ai so coefficients of a1 a2 a3 all the things are given and in short this is the form of phi x and he has also given an example like pi by 4 cos x so it's cos x can be expressed as a combination of sine series and this is how it looks like so here he has actually calculated the constant so initially it was a1 a2 a3 but then by utilizing this particular formula the constants have been calculated so in some other video we'll do some exercise to expand a particular analytical function in terms of Fourier series and then uh, calculating all the coefficients so we'll be doing an exercise on that otherwise it will not be transparent to you so but for the for today we are just explaining the facts and in the upcoming classes we'll be talking about the hands-on session and the demonstrations so yeah initial one was the sign series but this one was the entire range of series where you can see both cos and sine functions are there so it was also written in the very analytical theory of heat so you can see any function of whatever fx may be developed in the form of this so this is the total form of Fourier series where uh, he has also mentioned how to calculate uh, this coefficient a a1 b1 a2 b2 b2 so everything is given here so uh, once you club all the coefficients then this is the entire form of a generic analytical function in terms of Fourier series yeah in this particular uh, book this was not mentioned as Fourier series because he only published it and later on to give him respect we call it Fourier series but he could not write by his name so this was not called Fourier series in the very book he published so yeah here we go with a simple example uh, what Fourier has taken so this is phi x so I am expressing it in terms of a1 
sin x so this is actually coming uh, i mean uh, here in we'll discuss about how to calculate these functions this arbitrary coefficients a1 a2 a3 and a4 so this is basically coming from the orthogonality theorem so we'll talk about the orthogonality theorem in detail in the upcoming lecture but today we are just mentioning that any two functions if we multiply it and over a particular region say for this sine and cosine function the region is expanding from minus pi to plus pi so if the integration of two functions say g1x and g2x in this closed domain is zero then we call those two functions as orthogonal to each other so the statement only i am talking in this particular video in the next video we'll talk about this orthogonal function in detail but in the today's video this orthogonality is being uh, taken to calculate a1 a2 a3 a4 so it is important to go through all the videos to understand the thing in detail and that is why few things i'll be using in a video and maybe the basics of the thing will be explaining in some other video so go ahead with all the videos so here now we come to the main point so what uh, this function is this is an arbitrary function where we we, we we know that that can be expressed as sine series a1 sin x a2 sin x a3 sin x and it is continuing now what i want to do is i want to calculate all those coefficients for say now i am interested in calculating this coefficient a2 for that what i have to do i have to multiply by this is sin 2x so i multiply by sin 2x in both the sides so even with every term you will have a sin 2x coming so here yeah sin 2x so additional sin 2x is coming because we have multiplied in the both the sides now what we do we know that this particular sin x and cosine x is exp is uh, applicable in in the range minus pi to plus pi because you, you know uh, pi plus something is again i mean this minus pi to plus pi is the entire range and then uh, i mean it's a kind of periodic function and that's why this uh, this limit is important so those are the basic things so i would like to cover all those basics in the upcoming videos but as of now you can see we are taking this particular integration so those integrations like sin x sin 2x so those are orthogonal to each other those two functions and we know it so if these two are orthogonal so the entire integration will be zero so this is coming as zero now when they are orthogonal if these coefficients are different so this is x this is 2x so they are orthogonal this is 3x this is 2x so they are orthogonal but this particular one if both the things are same like 2x and 2x then these two are not orthogonal so what happens is we get rid of all the terms because all other terms are becoming zero so, so you can cancel this you can cancel this you can cancel this and you can cancel all the terms so it was an infinite series but now what you have done is you have multiplied by something that's an orthogonal function so you are getting rid of every func every terms except this particular one so what happens now is you get rid of other terms so it has become short like up to this say sine 2x phi x dx so this particular term and then what have happens so you actually try to calculate this so sine 2x into sine 2x so this is giving sine square 2x now what i have done is divided by 2 multiplied by 2 so 2 sine square 2x so we all know that 2 sine square 2x is nothing but 1 minus cos 2x so uh, now the form has become in the left hand side we are not doing anything that is minus pi to pi sine 2x phi x so there will be 1 dx so a2 by 2 1 minus cos 2x now uh, this is the form so again the integration of 1 minus cos 2x dx so the for the cos 2x part it will be 0 for the dx part it will be x from minus pi to plus pi giving you 2 pi 2 2 will be cancelled out so this will be pi by pi into a2 so now 
if you want to calculate a2 so your a2 will be this one uh, okay 2 pi pi this 2 is again coming from the formula integration of minus pi to pi this is equal to 2 into 0 to pi so we have changed the limit so now the limit is 0 to pi that's why again this 2 is coming and this pi we have taken in the other side so a2 is becoming 2 by pi uh, similarly for a n it will be it will be a n equal to 2 by pi 0 to pi sin nx dx and again i am telling this 0 to pi 2 is nothing but equal to minus pi to pi 1 so you can also change the limit and then this 2 will not appear so you should be careful about this what is the limit you should actually look for and if the limit is 0 to pi then you have a 2 factor if the limit is minus pi to pi you don't have this 2 factor so all these things we know from the very theory of uh, uh, definite integrals so you have learnt it in your plus 2 that's why i'm not going into detail so orthogonality in a single sentence if i want to explain this is very important because this is cutting down an infinite series into a single term and then it is easier to calculate the coefficients of the Fourier series so if the functions were not orthogonal then it was very difficult to tackle those coefficients so that particular thing is the beauty of Fourier series so Fourier series is a kind of summation of the orthogonal functions so if you then multiply with the right orthogonal function then you can cut down the infinite series into a single term and you can calculate the coefficient so why am I explaining it multiple times because this is such a such a such an important thing that orthogonality and hence we will be uploading another video on orthogonality now coming to the Fourier series very important so so far what we learned we learned that any function that can be expressed as Fourier series so suppose you have a function of a square wave so according to Fourier's theory that it can be expressed as a summation of infinite series so you have multiple other sine series or cosine series that is summing up and giving you this particular thing so here you can see the contributor contributory sine waves are explained here uh, i mean shown here and if you want to have a short tooth wave kind then also you can actually take summation of multiple functions and that will give you this so i'll be giving you a hands-on i mean experience for calculating square wave sawtooth wave or triangular wave but one example i have taken here if you sum this particular wave so what is happening this has a higher amplitude but the frequency is very low then what we are doing we are gradually reducing the amplitude and increasing the frequency as i move up what you can see the frequency is becoming very very high but the amplitude is becoming very very low and if you do a sum of this kind of function with this kind of periodicity then you will get a function like this and if this particular things become an yeah, infinite series then you get a particular square wave so today we will be explaining today we will be showing you how to develop this kind of functions from the sine or cosine series now I, we all have read about this Fourier generalized Fourier series in our mathematics book so fx is equal to half of a0 and one infinite series of cos cosine functions and another infinite series of sine functions and there uh, we know how to calculate a n and b n so I have already explained how to calculate this this is from the orthogonality and it is 1 by pi minus pi to pi fx cos nx dx so the thing which we have explained here minus pi to pi 1 by pi sin nx phi x dx so this is similar here you can see here uh, for the cos also you can do it from the orthogonality so as i have mentioned we will be having a detailed operation on orthogonality in the upcoming video so it will be more clear to you but as today's topic is concerned let us talk about formation of different sine waves from this contributory sine or cosine function so yeah we were talking about the orthogonality so in mathematical term two function f1 and f2 are said to be orthogonal to an interval 
a b if in the interval a v f1 x and f2 x dx is 0 so in our case the interval is minus pi to plus pi so we can say this sine and cosine functions are orthogonal to each other in the limit of minus pi to plus pi so your range will be minus pi to plus pi for this particular thing so yeah again i'm telling this orthogonality should be understood in detail and hence we'll have more videos now let us uh, let us do some hands-on calculation to understand the Fourier series so before we go I would like to demonstrate something so this is actually called Fourier something there is something called Fourier AP circle so the concept is as Fourier mentioned any kind of arbitrary functions so the geometric representation of arbitrary functions means ar arbitrary lines so those arbitrary lines can be expressed as the summation of sine and cosine series that is geometrically explained by Fourier AP circle what is Fourier AP circle let, let us just show you suppose I want to make a closed diagram like this let us yeah like this so this can be made by Fourier AP circle there will be one one four circles needed needed to make this diagram so let us see it how it happens so this circles are actually moving with different speeds and they are forming the lines so this is called Fourier AP circle so any kind of diagram you can make so let us try some arbitrary diagram suppose this you can see this is the beauty of Fourier AP circle so as you as you are seeing it so things are not becoming that much clear from the initial understanding suppose I want to make this one a circle kind so yeah it is obvious that this particular thing needs more discussion and this is very much interesting and hence we will be discussing about it in the upcoming video so this series is going to be very much attractive as far as I believe so we will be learning about Fourier AP circles we will be learning about functions we will be learning about Fourier transformation to go back to the initial series suppose what I am telling is if you have any arbitrary say this kind of function so the consisting contributory sine or cosine function you can actually get from the Fourier series and that also we will be talking about so now let us go to some suppose you want to make a square wave so you can see this is the square wave which you want to make from the contributory sine wave so how to make this I have already explained here to make a square wave the condition is you should start with a low frequency sine wave with a higher magnitude and gradually you should reduce the magnitude and increase the frequency so this is the concept I mean and this concept has come from the experience as I have studied on it so I know uh, this is I mean otherwise there is no mechanism uh, to intuitively I mean uh, visualize it uh, only thing is you have to look for the coefficients and the Fourier series in order to have different kind of waveforms but let us work with this square function so I have initially told you like uh, what is the condition to make a square wave but let us now try to build it from the sinusoidal wave okay so this particular thing is uh, developed by Colorado University so this is a nice uh, I mean animation and uh, I acknowledge them for using their resources to make my videos you can also go through this website this will be helpful so now there is no wave what I will be doing is I will be taking different waves of different wavelengths and different amplitude so this is the amplitude 
so here let us take a high amplitude say the amplitude I want to take 1.28 so let us take it so from here you can calculate the wavelength so this is the wavelength you can see a complete wave is there now the idea is you should drop one so if a1 is taken you should drop a2 you should go for the a3 the next harmonic and in the next harmonic your amplitude should be little bit less and the frequency should be high say the amplitude we take 0 0.42 you can see this is the yellow wave and your yeah this is the wavelength lambda 3 you can see okay so wavelength is reducing that means frequency is increasing again you will drop one harmonic and you will go to a5 and you will reduce the magnitude somewhat say i make it 0 0.25 yeah so you can see gradually the resultant is becoming a kind of square wave so again if i go to the next to next harmonic leaving one and make the amplitude little bit less say 0 0.18 it becomes more like square wave so let us carry out this operation with a9 as well let us make the amplitude little bit less say 0.14 it is becoming more and more let us make it say 0.11 yeah it is becoming kind of square wave but this is not square you have ripples here so you need an infinite series in order to make it square and that is why i developed a particular fourier series in Math matlab code where we can actually see it suppose the same operation we will be doing here so this is the operation we will be doing let us initially So we'll be skipping one one harmonics. So that's why the loop is going from one to n with an interval of two because we are uh, not using a harmonic. We are going to the next odd harmonic. So one, three, five, seven like this. So initially, if we, 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 we have seen we went up to 11. So if we make it 11, then let us run the simulation. this figures uh, one minute let us run the yeah you can see it is becoming like a square wave but if we increase i mean still you have ripples now if we keep on increasing it suppose i make it 31 then if you see it is better if i make it say 71 it will be further I mean further improvement will happen let us see it yeah you can see it is becoming like a actual square now what if, if I make it a very large number say 1001 it takes some time yeah so, but you can see it has become a kind of square wave now what is the concept of making a sawtooth here you can see what is happening from this diagram you can see the logic is you should have positive alternating positive and negative magnet i mean amplitudes and the th thing is your amplitudes should be i mean attenuating like this is 6.4 this is 0 0.32 so as you keep on going your amplitude should be less and less and you should have alternating positive and negative that means there is a phase inversion so this is the concept and using this concept you can actually make this sawtooth kind of thing and i have also made it so here you can see here we will not be skipping any harmonic that's why the loop can go from 1 to n with an interval of 1 and the 
idea of adding up waves is you should have alternating positive and negative and for that what I have wrote is minus 1 to the power i which will give you alternatingly positive and negative and initially let us work with only 11 as the things we have done in this particular animation so there was only 11 uh, harmonics so yeah you can see there are ripples if you uh, have 11 harmonics but if you increase this number you will have perfect sawtooth kind of wave so let us make it 201 for the time being if we make it 201 yeah you can see this is the sawtooth so similarly you can actually work on different waveforms if you know the logic then you can put the logic so this is again nothing but the uh, Fourier series you can see the sine series here so uh, only we are adding up sine series and we are getting square waves we are getting triangular waves so why this is important in terms of uh, heat transfer calculation suppose you have a particular block where heat is distributed like this so you don't had any equation to represent this kind of wave before Fourier published his work but now we know this particular waveform can be explained as a combination of signs, sine functions that means a series so in the initial condition we may have this kind of situation a real life situation is arbitrary suppose just visualize you have a heated block and and on the heated block the temperature is distributed randomly so that is an arbitrary function and that arbitrary function uh, initially don't visualize 2d because it will be complicated let us visualize we have a rod where the temperature is random on the rod at the initial condition so that random function can be expressed as a sum of Fourier series so we have an equation we have a mathematical expression for the heat on the rod and that is important and that is why Fourier series is very much important to solve real life problems so just uh, logically think about it if the temperature is distributed like this as time grows so it will mimic the initial condition like it, if it is like this initially suddenly it cannot be, become a flat function so the temperature will follow its initial condition so if the initial condition is expressed by Fourier series so your final temperature will also be expressed in terms of Fourier series and what will change the coefficients will change and how the coefficients will be calculated that is the concept of analytical solution of the uh, heat equation which we will be talking after two or three videos but uh, this exercise is important as far as I believe so learning about Fourier series is important learning about orthogonality is important so we have covered a, I mean quite lot of things in this particular video and in the upcoming videos we will do few more exercise so that those orthogonality Fourier series become more transparent to you and we can go ahead with the analytical solution so our analytical solution will be the first objective and then we will go for numerical methodologies so with this I stop here and I request you to subscribe to my channel if you are liking my videos. Thank you.